Mr. President, in this week of Veterans Day, I'd like to take a few moments to speak about a very brave Marine who was a great friend of mine and a true champion of America's veterans. Congressman Lane Evans of Illinois passed away last Wednesday. He was only 63 years old. Lane had been battling Parkinson's disease for nearly 20 years. A few years ago, another illness, Lewy body disease, began attacking his memory. One cruel disease ravaged his body as the other assaulted his brain, but his spirit and his quiet courage remained unbroken to the end. Lane and Evans and I were both elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1982. Two surprise Democrats who were elected in traditionally Republican, conservative, downstate congressional districts. We were both sons of blue collar families. We both learned our values from our parents, our neighbors, the nuns and priests at school. We both learned from politicians who were leaders in our state, like Senator Paul Simon. Lane and I worked closely together in Congress. Parkinson's forced Lane Evans to retire from Congress in 2007 long before his time. We remained friends. I used to visit him, and when I did, we'd share our favorite stories about political adventures. Lane Evans was a kind and good person. He was funny, with a razor-sharp intellect, and he was courageous. He joined the Marines two weeks after graduating from high school. It was 1969. Lane was 17 years old. Military service was a tradition in the Evans family. Lane's, da Lane's dad had served in the Navy. One of Lane's brothers was already serving in Vietnam, so Lane was stationed stateside and then in Okinawa. After two years in the Marines, he came home and he used the GI Bill to earn a college degree, graduating magna cum laude from Augustana College in Rock Island. Then he earned a law degree from Georgetown. He came home again and started a successful law practice in Rock Island, serving children, the poor, and working families. In 1982, Lane Evans decided to make a run for Congress. He may have been the only person in the beginning who thought he had a prayer of winning. He'd never run for office before. He was all of 31 years of age, and he looked like he was 21 on a good day. History was against him. Voters in that district had only elected a Democratic congressman once in the previous century, and that had been only for two years. Lane Evans worked hard. He got lucky when the incumbent congressman, a lifelong Republican and moderate, lost to a hard right challenger. On election night in 1982, Lane Evans and I were both elected to the U.S. House of Representatives for the first time. It was my third try to get elected. It was Lane's first. He never lost after that. He served 24 years in the House. His voting record was often to the left of many of his constituents, but he was unapologetic. Voters reelected Lane over and over because they knew he was honest, forthright, and he cared about them. He was straightforward and sincere. People knew that he was a man of principle who would always vote his conscience no matter what. When it came to constituent service, Lane Evans set the standard. Lane and his staff were so good at cutting through bureaucratic rep red tape that the chairman of the National Republican Congressional Committee once joked that, quote, two-thirds of the people in Lane Evans' district think that he signs their Social Security checks. Lane's speeches were always packed, and not because he was a great speaker. People came to Lane's speeches because of what happened after. He never left a speech until everyone in the audience who wanted to speak to him had their chance. Lane's dad was a firefighter, his mom a nurse. And in the blue collar neighborhood where he grew up, their steady incomes made the Evans family better off than most of their neighbors. As a young lawyer and member of Congress, Lane Evans fought for people like the parents of his childhood friends who worked shifts in factories and firehouses. He was a champion of blue collar workers and senior citizens. Lane fought for fair trade, a fair minimum wage, and the right to collectively bargain. He worked for a cleaner environment and protection of family farmers. He fought to give students from working class families the same chance he had to get a good college education. He was a giant on the House Armed Services Committee, and he really understood the Rock Island Arsenal was more than just an arsenal for our nation's defense. It was a major, important employer in his district. Most of all, most of all, Lane Evans fought for veterans. This week of Veterans Day is a good time to remember how much Lane Evans of Illinois meant to America's veterans and their families. He made veterans concern the cornerstone of his congressional career. He was the first chairman of the Vietnam Era Veterans Congressional Caucus and the first Vietnam Era veteran to serve as ranking member of the House Veterans Affairs Committee. He was also the ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee. During his time in Congress, 
There was no federal program for veterans that didn't bear Lane Evans' mark. Veterans today enjoy increased education benefits, improved health care, strengthened home loans, judicial review of their benefits, additional opportunities for veteran-owned business, and a host of other improved benefits because of the leadership, determination, and heart of Lane Evans. From his earliest days in Congress, Lane Evans pushed for action on issue helping Vietnam veterans. He was an outspoken advocate to address the problem, problems and embarrassment of the homelessness and substance abuse among Vietnam veterans. In his first term, he led the effort to create a pilot program establishing community-based veteran centers to help with job and marriage counseling and post-traumatic stress syndrome long before it was a popular term. The program has since grown to include veteran centers all across America. Lane Evans led the fight to get compensation for Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange and for their kids born with spina bifida as a result of that exposure. And it, wasn't, it was not just his war that concerned him. He was one of the first members of Congress to push for more information about the Gulf War Syndrome. He supported increased opportunities for women in the military, an early supporter for full civil rights for gays in the military. Paul Rykoff, the CEO of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, here's what he said about Lane. In the early days of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, Lane was one of the first members of Congress to take on issues like PTSD and TBI, traumatic brain injury. He helped put our issues on the map. Lane Evans worked to include Parkinson's research as part of funding for the VA to make sure veterans suffering from this disease receive the best possible care. He worked with Senator Leahy, then Senator Hagel, and the Vietnam Veterans of America to push for a U.S. and international ban on the production of anti-personnel landmines. He was awarded the Vietnam Veterans of America's first annual President's Award for Outstanding Achievement in 1990. In 1994, the AMVETS gave him the Silver Helmet Award, known as the Oscar of Veterans Honors. This is how Lane explained his commitment to veterans. He said, and I quote, our veterans, those returning from Iraq, those who scaled the cliffs above the beaches of Normandy, those who walked point in the jungles of Vietnam, those who survived the brutality of Korea and other battlefields, all who honorably served or who are now serving have earned the assurance that the Veterans Administration, their system, will be there when they need it. Just as we practice on the battlefield to leave no one behind, we should not slam the door on any veteran who needs the VA system. Now, the best way we can honor Lane Evans' memory is by more than just a speech on the floor of the Senate is to continue his work on behalf of America's veterans, continue to work the, uh, to make the VA responsive to the massive number of disability claims followed that have been filed since Iraq and Afghanistan, and make sure that every veteran receives respect, health care, job training, and the opportunities that they've earned. There's another way we can honor this champion of veterans, and that's by naming the year-old VA Medical Center in Galesburg, Illinois, the Lane A. Evans VA Community-Based Outpatient Clinic. This center is in the heart of what was Congressman Lane Evans' congressional district for so many years, and nearly 4,000 veterans a year seek services there. I'm honored that it's a bipartisan effort to name this center after Congressman Evans, led in the House by Congresswoman Sherry Bustos. Lane used to say that he loved the Marines because the Marines salute their lowest members. I hope my colleagues will join me in honoring one of the Marines' finest members by supporting this proposal to name the VA Outpatient Clinic in Galesburg, Illinois, in honor of Congressman Lane Evans. Lane Evans was laid to rest at the Rock Island Arsenal on the date the 239th anniversary of the Marine Corps. I remember so many years ago, 18 years ago, when Lane and I were in a Labor Day parade in Galesburg, Illinois. I didn't think much of it at the time. It was just another parade and another campaign Lane told me later that he noticed something was wrong that day. As he was waving his left hand, he realized that it was numb and he had no feeling. He continued to work even after he had been diagnosed with early Parkinson's. It made, him difficult. it made it difficult for him to stand without pain or to even smile easily. He never, ever complained. When his legs locked up, when he was in terrible pain, he'd tell his closest friends, I'm so lucky. I, could be, I couldn't carry mail, I couldn't be a meat cutter, but I can still do my job as a congressman. As we say in Illinois, thank heavens for Lane Evans. And thank the good Lord that he devoted so much of his life in Congress to the people he loved in his district and to the veterans of America. I offer my condolences to Lane's family, especially his three brothers, to his brothers and sisters in arms, and to all of us who loved him and were touched by him, his gentle life.
Mr. President, I yield the floor.